Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer Gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Black Green Elves, which got a few new updates with the latest Explorer Anthology expansion, the main one being a Shaman of the Pack, a 3-mana three 3-2 three elf, saying when it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to the number of elves you control. And as you all know, elves can go wide very quickly, so Shaman is an excellent win condition, giving you a way to maybe kill the opponent without needing to attack. And then another nice addition is the two copies of Nykthos in our mana, base, even though we're not a dedicated devotion strategy, as an elf deck that adds a ton of permanence to the board, we will be increasing our devotion to green, so Nykthos can maybe give us a small mana boost, making it easier to maybe activate an elvish warmaster to pump the team, or a clan caller to search up additional elves. Also have the new leaf crowned visionary from Dominaria United, which can draw additional cards whenever we cast an elf spell if we pay a green mana. So those are all great mana sinks. And then at one mana we've got the usual suspects with Elvish Mystic and Lenor Elves. I also like four copies of Sentinel just to give us that consistency of maybe enabling a turn to Warmaster and already making an extra token. Having Reach also relevant against the Mono Blue Spirits deck or maybe Green White Angels. And then at two mana we've got Edwina's Elite, can also make an extra token when it enters. So that's another great way to increase our Elf count for Shaman of the Pack. And then Warmaster, one of the best cards in the deck, especially if we can enable it on turn 2 to start making extra tokens whenever another elf enters the battlefield under our control. Only triggers once each turn, but we can also maybe trigger it during the opponent's turn if we can make elves at instant speed through our collected company, which is of course another staple of these elf decks. Can take a look at the top 6 cards and find 2 creatures with mana value 3 or less and put them straight onto the battlefield, so that can also find our Shaman of the Pack to maybe drain the opponent to death. And then four copies of Elvish Clan Caller to pump other elves and can pay six mana to find another copy. Can also be a nice shuffle effect if we have a Realm Walker in play and have a land on top of our deck that we cannot play out. Otherwise we can name Elf and cast Elves off the top of our deck. So that's another great source of card advantage besides our four copies of a Leaf Crowned Visionary. And then rounding out the deck, two copies of Circle of Dreams Druid, especially powerful when played on turn two, as it can tap, making a green for each creature we control. So that's a great way to empty your hand and enable our various mana sync abilities, especially if we can find it end of turn with a collected company, making it harder for the opponent to kill it unless they have insta speed removal at the ready. And then our mana base includes a Lair of the Hydra as another mana sink. We've got Bosechu for added interaction against artifacts and enchantments. And then we need some black green dual lands to cast Shaman of the Pack. So we've got Blooming Marsh, Overgrown Tomb. We've got two Lanor Wastes and four copies of Secluded Courtyard. Now we're playing this in best of one, so we don't necessarily need the full set of Lanor Waste to cast sideboard cards like Thought Seize or Fatal Push. Now the reason I'm not playing Unclaimed Territory in addition to Secluded Courtyard is that if we draw too many of them, we may not be able to pay for for the Leaf Crown Visionary's ability, which specifically needs a green mana, and even though this works on activated abilities, this is a triggered ability, so that's why we're not playing the full set of Unclaimed Territory alongside it. And two copies of Nykthos to maybe give us a small mana boost, we're not going all in on the Devotion Synergy, so not playing four of them since it is a legendary after all, and can also be a little awkward early if we need to cast Clan Caller or Visionary, and this doesn't make enough green mana yet. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. No one mana elf, but a lot of war masters, so we'll try it. And we may end up generating more mana with Nykthos as well. Opponent on a mono blue spirits deck, so turn to war master should be decent. Opponent can level up ascendant spirit, so they have a free attack. And then I probably just tap out for Realm Walker to be mana efficient. And then if we get to 4 mana we can maybe double spell Warmaster. Opponent going for a double Curious Obsession turn. Okay, so that's going to pull them ahead. Although they'll eventually need to give it flying, otherwise we can just chum block with our 1-1 tokens. And uh, sure, we'll play a Realm Walker now. Or do we want to just play another Warmaster here? I think Realm Walker still has higher upside if we want to play around counter spells going forward. And then I think I still attack, even if they bounce the token, I wouldn't want to chum block. So we can start playing Elves off the top. And uh, 
yeah, hopefully take over before the Ascendant Spirit takes flight. Opponent could still have a Geist Light Snare. Tempting to play Shaman of the Pack, although if that gets countered, I guess we can still play a Lenor Elves. So I guess we should start with the Lenor Elves. Or do I? Yeah, I think I do. Opponent does not counter that one. Probably counters this one. And there's a snare. And could still attack to get in two damage. Is that worth it? Yeah, probably. So for now we can still jump spirits. Our devotion also slowly increasing, so Nykthos can make more mana. Would like to find a sentinel at some point to give us a reach creature. So we can maybe still chump if needed. And yeah, that's the downside of moving in on Ascendant Spirit, is it does not have flying right away. Okay, land on top. So, could try an instant speed collected company. Unlikely to work out, so instead... Probably go for Warmaster. If that resolves, I can activate Nykthos and still play two more creatures or maybe go for Instant Speed Company now. Yeah, Instant Speed Company sounds pretty nice now. Opponents are likely to level up Ascendant Spirits and then in response we may want a Company, we'll see. I don't think I'm attacking into Faceless Haven though. And by using Company in the opponent's turn, we trigger double Warmaster once again. Opponent flashes in Rattle Chains. So yeah, if they level up spirits, I think I have to company now. So we miss out on the extra tokens, but we guarantee that company resolves, which is pretty important. We found our sentinel, so that can jump where needed. And now we have seven devotion for Nykthos, so that can help activate Warmaster to maybe kill the opponent on the spot. So send in spirit a 7-7 seven, seven now. So even if they bounce Sentinel, we're still not dead. And that's what they'll do with a Brazen Borrower. Take seven, opponent keeps two creatures back. Although we can still activate Warmaster here. So let's say our opponent's double chumps. Then they're still taking six plus four is ten, plus another ten is twenty, so... Yeah, I think they're just dead if we go for it, although could even play a clan caller first, which also increases our devotion. And then attack with all except for Lenor Elves, which needs to stay back to activate Nykthos. Our opponent blocks, but we can activate Warmaster. And that should do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and our hand seems fine. We can play turn one Sentinel, turn two... Can't quite play Visionary into another one drop, but we can play Elite into another one drop. And then the Visionary will increase our devotion with Nykthos as well. Opponent's abs on colors, so it looks like a Grease Fang deck. And uh, they've already found at least an Asika's Chariot here to put in the graveyard. So turn 3 Grease Fang will be effective. We'll stick to the plan. Play Elite, play Sentinel. And then next turn we can play a couple Lords. Start going wide for Shaman. And at least having a few reach creatures will come in handy in case Parhelion shows up. Opponent's got a Thoughtseize, so at least no turn 3 Grease Fang. Probably take a Leaf Crown Visionary is my guess. That's okay. And a Guardian as a discard outlet. Sometimes see the uh, Hallow Blade as well in that slot. Okay, so we just want to keep going wide. Do we want to maybe play a Lord already? I think we're better off playing Elite times two, and then next turn pumping the team 
since we're gonna have to tap double sentinel here for mana. And then now we're actually generating extra mana with Nykthos. So that's gonna be an interesting play in next turn. There is an argument for playing Clan Caller to increase our devotion slightly. I'm not interested in attacking since our opponent probably wants to discard something to Guardian anyways. And yeah, there's Parhelion, so if they have a Grease Fang, Parhelion's gonna hit us, and there it is. Not a one-hit KO, but uh, definitely puts us pretty far behind. So what's our sequencing? Would love to draw land. That can maybe help us set up lethal. The Guardian attacking, so this is hitting us for 15 total. And Guardian can discard Parhelion to set up lethal for next turn. So I don't think there's a point in me trying to block Guardian. I think next turn we basically have to kill our opponent. So I'll need all the extra attackers I can muster. So maybe with an untapped land we get there. If I can play Clan Caller into Shaman of the Pack. Okay, that's an untapped land, so let's see if we get there. So step one, I guess it doesn't really matter how much devotion we have. I can just play both and then a Clan Caller first. And then I can't even use Nykthos since we need black mana for Shaman, so that didn't make a difference. But uh, yeah, Clan Caller into Shaman. Tap Clan Caller with Sentinel. So play Shaman. That's gonna drain the opponent for a bunch. Down to six and now attack with all. Opponent can block block and take seven exactly. So unless they have a fatal push we should have it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Beat a turn for a Grease Fang combo. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our plan's straightforward. A ramp into company. Hope for the best. So hopefully the elves survive. And it looks like we're up against a mono white aggro. And a turn to Circle of Dreams could be exciting. Opponent might have a Brutal Cathar to interact with it. Otherwise, we're good to go. Thalia. Can be annoying, but not if we get to untap with Circle of Dreams. We'll have plenty of mana to spare. And then we go to watch out for an eventual Brave the Elements, which can make the opponent's team unblockable. Hopeful Initiate, so no Brutal Cathar. And another Officer. Take four. And then a Thalia's Lieutenant next turn could do some serious damage. Warmaster, great draw. So we should be able to play Warmaster, play Elves, and then still company. And if I company the opponent's turn, we'll get an extra 1-1 from the Warmaster. So that's a pretty sweet turn. And then of course hoping to hit a few copies of Shaman of the Pack. Brutal Cathar is going to go after Circle of Dreams. And we'll company now. Hitting double clan caller. So now our team's bigger than the opponents. And we still have a company to spare. And we can cast it if we take two down to 14. Not in danger of dying next turn, I don't think. Even if they go lieutenant plus a uh, brave the elements. And we might be able to present lethal here with company finding shaman of the pack. Or some more lords. Shaman of the pack and let's go with visionary. So resolve the warmaster first to get an extra token. Bonus at 10 and what happens if we attack all? And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay we're on the play and seems decent. Turn one mystic. Turn two we can already play a Realm Walker or maybe keep developing our mana with another one mana elf and win as elite. And eventually Nykthos will make more mana too since we have quite a bit of devotion. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one mountain, so we could lose our elf. 
And there's a Firebrand. Which is attacking, that's very surprising. Could imply that there's a Chain Warler in our future, but I really need this Mystic early on, so I think I still take it. Normally when the opponent gives you the choice, you should just take the trade, since they wouldn't give you the choice if this were good for us. But maybe if I string together enough Lords, they wouldn't be able to necessarily punish us with a Chain Warler. Okay, that helps, so maybe now I do go for Realmwalker instead of uh, Elite plus uh, Lanor Elves. Although it's still a close call. The problem, of course, is that Clan Caller still dies to a Firebrand in combination with Chain Warler. Even having two Lords would not be enough. So, best we can do is probably get some value of Realmwalker. And then Sentinel is a little bit better in the face of a potential Chain Warler. Could see a Stomp plus Firebrand to finish off Realmwalker. And then we'll reevaluate next turn. Firebrand stays back now. Okay, let's uh, play some Elves off the top. So Nykthos still mana neutral. So we won't be able to really abuse it this turn. Yeah, we can play Warmaster off the top and not lose any value really. And then Sentinel will trigger Warmaster. And both of those survive a potential Chain Warler. It's a very strange game with a turn 1 Firebrand not killing our Elf. Opponent does stomp Warmaster, so they had the option of killing a Realmwalker, but didn't. Does that mean our opponent also has a Torbrand to combo with a Chain Warler? Who knows? But there's probably no harm in sending in the Realmwalker now. And if they're not careful, Nykthos will go off next turn. And give us a huge mana boost. But I'm expecting a Chain Warlord here to clean things up. It's gonna be Annex instead. Okay, opponent may be wanting to preserve Firebrands for Embercleave purposes. So if they're playing Bonecrusher and Annex, I don't know if they have room for a Chain Warlord as well. Firebrands still hangs back. And uh, yeah, Visionary is two more Devotion. So step one, play Visionary. And there's a Shaman of the pack, also looking pretty good here. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, what a weird game, but would have been able to combo off quite nicely as we level up here. Can have a look at the rest of our turn just out of curiosity. So let's assume our opponent doesn't kill anything in response with Firebrand. Then we still have a land drop left. We can tap the elves to make mana with Nykthos, or I guess one elf and forest. And then our Devotion 6, so I could even play another Elf first, let our Devotion be 7. And then with 7 mana I can play Clan Caller, play Elite. And then with the Sentinel we can still cast the Shaman of the Pack. And that's going to be too much for the opponent to overcome, even if they do maybe kill a Lord with a Firebrand. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Turn 1 Sentinel, turn 2 maybe go for Warmaster. Unless we want to play around removal and maybe wait to play Warmaster until we can trigger it right away. Although against Mono Blue Spirits, turn to Warmaster sounds great. They shouldn't be able to counter it yet. And that can easily pull us ahead. Pwn flashes and Sailor. So I think I should attack because if they put a Curious Obsession on it, I won't be able to block anyways. And I'm fine trading one damage for one damage. There's a Curious Obsession, now a 2-2. So opponent does get to draw, but best they can do is a Geist Light Snare for one mana to counter, and it's a Haven, so no blue mana. Okay, so let's start going wide, and then we can maybe set up a lethal Shaman. So we could double Elite, or we can Elite plus Mystic to keep developing our mana. Phantom grows Sailor, but once again, opponents mostly tapped out. So if they have a Geist Light Snare, we can still resolve a Clan Caller. So that's probably step one, and then we can still play an Elite afterwards. And there's a Snare, so we'll happily pay for that. Oh, 
make another token attack. And then a Shaman of the Pack is looking very deadly here. Although I don't expect it to resolve. Opponent going for a Phantom. They've got six in the air. But they look pretty dead on the board. I guess best they could do is like bounce Clan Caller and have another Geist Light Snare. Although I don't think that saves them here. So how about we try and kill them with a Shaman of the Pack? Play Elite. Play Shaman. And if they counter, they should still be very dead. Opponent had the Brazen Borrower to bounce Clan Caller, but Shaman will drain him to death. Satisfying. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. And I'll hang on to Boseju, even though playing this on Elf gives the opponent a little bit more information. Next turn, Warmaster into Mystic, make a token. Up against a red aggro. And a Visionary is great too, I think we still prefer Warmaster early on. And then next turn we can pump the team with Visionary. Maybe just play Tapped Overgrown Tomb, or we can play Shaman afterwards, we'll see. Opponent does have the Stomp for Warmaster. And a Circle of Dreams. So I could double spell Visionary and Circle of Dreams. And hope our opponent does not have a Goblin Chain Warlord, pretty much. Since that would be devastating. Or we could just play Visionary and Attack, or play Circle of Dreams and Attack. I think I want to have the Visionary in play to actually start drawing extra cards. And then I think it's worthwhile to just play Circle of Dreams as opposed to getting in 4 damage. And we'll hit for 2. I'm fine racing the red deck. Given that we were on the play with a good start. Soulscar Mage is fine, so no Chain Warlord at least. Swift Spear says there a removal for one of our rare elves here. An attack, we'll take it. And no removal, so that's promising. Okay, Wizard's Lining missing out on a prowess. Damage is a little strange. So we get to play Elite and Shaman of the Pack now. Don't have the best attacks, admittedly. So we'll need to top deck another Lord. Since I don't think I'm trading Circle of Dreams for Soulscar Mage. There's a Bone Crusher. And there's a Realm Walker. Could be very promising. Probably keep some Black Man on tap so we can play Shaman of the top. And maybe even two Black Mana. Just in case. Name Elf. That's an elf. And that's a land. Okay, so we've got the card advantage going in our favor now. Happy to just hang back. Skewer going face as opposed to killing Realmwalker. That's quite the statement. And an Eidolon. Eidolon is good at punishing a Realmwalker. That's for sure. Although I think we still keep going here since there's no real upside to waiting and a collected company does not trigger Eidolon and can hopefully find some more finishers like Shaman of the Pack. So we'll pass. I don't think we have any great attacks. Already played our Buseju, which could have been an answer to Eidolon. And another company on top. I think we still play it here since what's the alternative? I guess just draw another company and then I can cast both next turn. Yeah, maybe that's not so crazy. We're at 9, so I don't think we're in danger of dying, even with Ramana Ruins putting us to 7. Two burn spells still don't do it. And we have the mana to cast double company the same turn. So opponent puts us to 7. One card in hand. 
take our draw step and main face company and I should probably still leave some black mana available to play Shaman off the top. Maybe should still wait on tapping Circle of Dreams in case we need to activate a War Master. So something like this should be fine. And find Shaman of the Pack, Circle of Dreams. So this may already be enough, but we still have another company and our opponent dies. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a Keeper. Turn 1 Elf, turn 2 War Master plus Elf, facing what could be blue-white control. So we gotta strap in for a grindy matchup here. That's probably not gonna favor us if our opponent has a Sweeper, but still play turn 1 Helena Elves. Sometimes if you're playing against a red deck it can be better to play Sentinel turn 1 since it survives a 1 damage effect and you can still play War Master plus Elves on turn 2. But uh, now we'll play it this way. So name Elf, play War Master, play Sentinel and then next turn we can keep up an instant speed collected company. As a scatter, that's too bad. Don't see that one every day. So next turn maybe go for company. And now we've got two of them, so Sentinel can attack, since we won't be able to pay for Sensor with Sentinel. Opponent does nothing. And of turn company, if our opponent counters we can maybe resolve the other company. And uh, Realm Walker plus Shaun of the Pack I think is the pick here. And then now we don't need to commit another company to add to the board since we can just play some elves off the top with Realm Walker perhaps. Could go Elite plus Shaman to drain the opponent for a bunch more. Although we may be overextending into a Supreme Verdict, although we'll still have company to refuel. Still feels kinda iffy. Although it's not like playing a Shaman later is gonna deal more damage. So maybe that's still the way to go. Upside of keeping up company is that we can get back on the board post sweeper. So maybe play a Dwinnens Elite and then I can still company. Sure. And then just send Realm Walker Shaman. As opposed to playing another Shaman here. Which would drain for 7, so it's not bad, but we'll see if damage happens. Opponent's at 10. Yeah, I think the best chance is still our opponent tapping out for Verdict, casting company afterwards, and then maybe Shaman next turn being lethal. If we get lucky on our company. Pretty happy with this Field of Ruins, since we get to shuffle away a card that's definitely not an elf. Could cast Company in response, but then we're maybe still running into a Supreme Verdict. But it would have played around a 2-mana Counterspell, potentially. Poseidon on top. Opponent gets to have their turn. Another Field of Ruin. And there's a Supreme Verdict, so... Float some mana. We'll let the Verdict resolve. And then cast company and hope for the best. Okay, that's pretty good. So you can go War Master plus Shaman. Shaman will deal three, and then next turn Shaman will deal five, and that should be game. Make sure to get the token first. Unless our opponent has some more interaction here. Circle of Dreams. Okay, let's just play another Shaman. March for X equals 2 still doesn't quite save them as we drain for 3 and attack for 4. Awesome, so even beat blue eyed Control, which is probably an unfavorable matchup if they're packing a bunch of main deck sweepers.
All right, so we got to see black green elves in action, and I'm very impressed by its performance. I think the deck should have a decent matchup against mono green devotion as well, since both decks can generate a lot of mana. But if it comes to a board stall, we have more tools to kind of go over the top with our shaman of the pack draining the opponent to death and elfish warmaster pumping the team. So that should be a winnable matchup. And having a lower curve should also be an advantage against mono blue spirits, as we saw, as we can easily force a few creatures past counter spells, whereas mono green devotion needs to tap out for some 5 and 6 mana spells, which are easier to counter for mono blue spirits, which may go up in popularity if mono green becomes more popular. So at the end of the day, I think elves is pretty well positioned until people start packing more sweepers to deal with a go wide strategy. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.